What's going on guys, we're doing a new Fantasy Draft Challenge video today. Can't believe I've never done this one before, but we can only draft Canadian players. Now, in regards to what team we're going to be, originally I was trying to decide between Toronto and Montreal, but I feel like Ottawa actually makes the most sense since it is the capital city of Canada. Now obviously because of the Fantasy Draft, the overalls there do not matter. We have to have that turned on. I think the only other thing turned on will be computer trades and salary cap. And so I just looked into the Fantasy Draft guys, currently picking 5th overall. I'm just going to close my eyes, randomize. As always, see where are we gonna pick here? Uh, 31. <laughs> I don't really like that spot. I'm not gonna lie, but I guess we do get like back-to-back -back solid players. Let's uh, let's give it a go. I mean, obviously, you'd like to have first overall pick. Take Connor McDavid, guaranteed Canadian. Uh, couldn't take Matthew to drive south. We could be taking McCarr. Went four. McKinnon five. Uh, Crosby there at eight. So uh, let's see who's available here with our pick. Could go Bergeron, Stamkos, maybe one two. Play them together, have a really good 1-2 center. Um, Theodore as well would give us a really good defenseman. Same with Dougie Hamilton. Tavares is there. I feel like Bergeron will last a bit longer because he is 36. I'm thinking we'll keep it simple here, guys. I'm just going to take Steven Stamkos. He usually plays quite well. And like I was saying, with our next pick, because it is, you know, so soon after. Ovi in the second round. I don't think I've ever seen Ovi fall the second round. That is crazy. And so I'm just kind of curious to see how the rest of the first round went. You guys are kind of curious uh, where these guys go. So obviously this is using my roster. Um, so far, I feel like nothing too crazy. Shashurkin there at 20. I think I'd rather have him, honestly, than Vasilevsky just because he is younger. Um, McAvoy below. Yossi also interesting because, again, um, so much younger. Connor Hellbuck there was in the first round. Kane went all the way to 27, even though he's so sick in the sim. Eichel won after him. Cal Connor, Stammer, Peterson. Okay, so Bergeron is still there. I wonder, though, 36 could wait until the third round potentially to get him. Go for, say, a Shifley. One overall less, but. Eight years younger, better contract. Also, Shea Theodore here would give us a great number one defenseman. Only 26, already 89, making 5 million for the next four years. After this pick, I have to wait a while for our next pick. So I feel like Shifley's for sure gone, Bergeron's probably gone. I might go Theodore here just to make sure we get number one defenseman. Uh, we'll see what's available now at the end of the third round. Yeah, okay, so Bergeron's gone, same with Shifley. Uh, there's no, you know, 89 defenseman. Giroux we can probably wait on. Doughty can maybe wait on. I'm trying to think, who would go next? You know what, guys? I'm thinking Darnell Nurse here. 26 years old, ace on overall. Uh, one year left there on the good contract. Obviously, all that matters for us with one year to go. Could take Doughty next. Really have a great defense if he's there. He is. Claude Giroux should be available for a bit. He would be a really nice you know, addition to that top six. Malikin, Pavelski, Kreider, Tarasenko. Can't take any of those guys. Hatch ready, cannot. Duchesne we could take as well. Now you got Tyler Sagan, Taylor Hall here. Taylor Hall especially actually has a pretty solid contract. Not the case there for Doughty. So I'm going to take Taylor Hall here. Uh, might be a bit of a risk, but I'm trying to like just think, you know, who's going to go where. Matt Duchesne's still there. Same with Mark Giordano, even Brent Burns. Drew Doughty's gone. I'm honestly surprised because I heard Carlson's still there. Similar contract, obviously. Um, it looks like Claude Giroux also got taken, which I actually didn't expect uh, due to his age, but he's gone. And I'm looking at goalies here, guys. As you can see, the highest rated ones are now just 85 overall. So, as always, I think I'm just going to wait for a starting goalie. So, this next pick here, obviously we have some options. David Perron, Matt Duchesne. I feel like Duchesne, he's pretty solid. Now, the contract will he still be available later on. Giordano Burns, we could take both of them with our next two picks. I feel like that might be the move. We get a really solid top four defense. I mean, even Matt Dumba we could add. So I'm thinking Brent Burns here just because he is so good offensively. Obviously, we want guys who can put up points. So Pavelski is still there. Mark Giordano is still there. Maybe he'll actually be available for quite some time, being 37. Um, Gallagher is still there. Johansson's there. Matt Duchesne, though, is gone. And looking at potentials here, guys, check this out. Matt Dumba is still there. We could also still draft Owen Power in the sixth round. First overall pick. Uh, Matty Beniers, it was just like a regular fantasy draft. Ken Johnson's there. Perfetti, Evanson, like, these guys are very good. I'm surprised they're still available. Anthony Mantha there, but the guy I'm actually going to take, this one might seem like off-the-board pick, is Tyson Berry. Reason being, even though he's 84 overall, he usually just produces so on the same with that 93 passing, those X-Factors. Again, we're trying to, you know, put up some points. So, offensive defensive, we're, like, set now, obviously. Theodore Burns, Berry. Mantha, you can see, just went, actually. So, Giordano's still there. I mean, him on the bottom pair, we could wait till probably like the second last pick uh, to get the other defenseman and then just kind of try and find some good forwards. Maybe we do that here. Again, our defense will be very solid. The goaltender will not be that great. With the D in front of him, we should be okay. 
We could start a guy like Mackenzie Blackwood, James Reimer. The only thing is, James Reimer is the same rating, nine years older. I'm sure we can get him in like, you know, the 14th round or something. So I feel like now we really got to start adding to this offense. So who's the best Canadian forward we can take here? Vander Kane wouldn't be bad at all. Obviously, power forward adds a lot to this team. Let's go with Vander Kane. And now with our next pick here, guys, I feel like we got to do this. Why not take Jordan Eberle, reunite him and Taylor Hall on this Canada team? Obviously, too. He's uh, Mr. Clutch when it comes to the World Juniors, so hopefully he'll be clutch for us maybe in these playoffs. Again, we're looking for some forwards here. Um, I'm trying to think. Is Brock Nelson Canadian? I feel like he's American. Okay, so yeah, he is. Uh, Mike Hoffman we could add. I'm trying to think who else here looks good. Um, Jamie Benn, Jonathan Tage. So maybe him on the third line with Jonathan Tage. That could be nasty. Um, I'm trying to think who would probably go first. Taze is older, but his salary is not as long. Let's go Jonathan Taze. Obviously, he's going to help us out a bit more on the PK as well. Uh, if he is available, we'll take Jamie Benn with this next one. Um, I, there he is. Okay, so Jamie Benn there. We have the top six forwards now filled out. Need one more defenseman. Still two more goaltenders. Uh, maybe now's the time to look for James Reimer. He is always not there. That sucks. But Cam Tablet is, and for some reason I thought he was American. Probably because he played for the Rangers. Turns out he is Canadian. He's from Ontario. So... Let's get our 84 overall goalie there. Let's just be careful. I feel like most of the forwards available, they're all kind of the same thing. So we got to start working on a third line here. I'm thinking Alex Kloran could be the perfect fit. Um, after him, we'll probably get a couple more forwards. And like I said, we'll leave obviously six defensemen backup goalie uh, for much later in the draft. Jeff Skinner, 83. Usually plays a lot better than that when you actually play with some good players. Terrible contract, so he might be available for a bit. Adam Henrique here could reunite him and Taylor Hall. Uh, a couple Spitfires. That might be nasty with, say, Eberle on that line. Jordan Stull would just give us, you know, an amazing defensive specialist. We could have some of the best PK in the league. I might go Jordan Stull here, and then if he is available with the next pick, we'll go Jeff Skinner again. Uh, salary cap's on, but doesn't take place until after the draft. Wow, it looks like Jeff Skinner's actually gone, and it sucks, because, like, Dabnoff's still there, he's Russian. JVR is American. That definitely sucks. Um, Jeff Carter we could take. 82, Sniper. Not too bad. All right, guys, so yeah, I'm just going to take Jeff Carter here. They'll fill out the top nine forwards. Maybe I'll probably take a defenseman next year. I feel like it'll matter more than fourth line guys. Now, having said that, guys, this next pick, I actually want to get one of the best fourth liners in the NHL last year, Mason Margement. Obviously, got a big payday. Reason being, I was looking at both Justin Schultz, P.K. Subban on defense. I'm fine with taking either one. Um, looks like Justin Schultz is actually gone now. Subban, though, is still there. So let's bring on Subban, be on the bottom pair. Nine million bucks. Definitely a lot for him. Uh, so we still need two more forwards here as well as a backup goalie. Now I'm trying to build a really good fourth line, guys. I'm looking at Brandon Tanev here, two-way forward. He's got the Trekland's X Factor. He's got some good physical stats. Let's add him. So I think we still need a fourth line center, though. Someone who could hopefully win some face-offs. Paul Stastny has quick draw. This might be our guy. And I think he's actually the only 82 overall Canadian player left, guys. So yeah, Paul Stastny is definitely the pick. And so the last one here, we need a backup goalie. Uh, somebody to go behind Talbot here. Okay, so I actually don't know who's Canadian. I think Martin Jones is. All right, yeah, he's from North Vancouver, so we can take him. Grice, of course, German. Halak is Slovakian. So team is filled out. I feel like it's pretty good. Maybe could have optimized it slightly better, but pretty happy. All right, guys, so just into the preseason. As you can see, our team's got a record of 4-2. and two. Taylor Hall's got a point per game. I'll show you what the lines are looking like. I feel like this team should be pretty solid. Although, after looking at the offense, I feel like, you know, definitely could have drafted a few more forwards early. I posted some defensemen, but still, I like the depth. So, we got Taylor Hall here on the first line with Jonathan Taze and Steven Stamkos getting a plus two. Eberle, Ben, and Kane's our second line. Kaloran, Stahl, Carter on the third with Marchment, Stasty, and Tanev on the fourth. Defensively here, we got Theodore Barry on the top pair of the plus three. I feel like these two guys should put up a ton of points as a top D pair. Nurse and Burns on the second pair even is very solid. Subban and Giordano there on the bottom pair get a plus one. So kind of crazy actually. Uh, four by five defensemen all have X factors and actually most of them have like four plus. So like I said, the defense should be really good. Talbot starting there, Martin Jones backing them up. In terms of the special teams, we get plus five on the first four man, zero on the second. Uh, power play one gets a plus five, looks pretty solid. Power play two, no bonus, but not too bad. Now the PK here is obviously what I was looking for with Taze and Stahl. Plus five on the first, plus two on the second. And the three man here is a plus three and a zero. So again, I feel like, you know, we could have had a bit more high powered forwards, but I don't really mind the depth of this team. Uh, if you're wondering what the captaincy here, had to give the C to Stamkos, who's our first round pick. 
Taves got one there because he was an alternate captain on Team Canada. Everly got one, obviously, for the World Junior Heroic. Now, before we get started with the sim here, guys, I will show you the ratings for this team matched up here against Buffalo Sabres. So, we've got 92 offense, 94 defense, 84 goaltending. Obviously, with the fantasy draft, some teams, you know, they go for a lot of young players. Some teams go for the veterans. We'll see how we do here. All right, guys, we're at the trade deadline here with a record of 39, 21, and 3. Not too bad. Currently second in the division there behind the Montreal Canadiens. Let's see, lean score, Steven Stamkos, over a point per game. So doing pretty solid, should be a playoff team, but still a month and a half to go. And it's now the end of the season, guys, your record of 52, 26, and four, you might have saw there, 108 points on the year, past the Canadians for first in the division. And wow, the Ducks and the Flames both there beat us out for the President's Trophy, but still first place in the Eastern Conference. Does Stamkos hold on? He does, as I lean score, 94 and 82. Would have loved to see him get 100 points, but obviously we'll settle for 94 there. Jonathan Tays had over a point per game this year, playing on that first line with Stamkos and Hall. That's crazy. He actually outperformed Taylor Hall. I guess he was on PKs and power plays. Yeah, time on ice per game, 23 minutes. We're running him quite a bit. Uh, Kane there, 55, so a big drop off after those three. Everly, 52. Sam Theodore, Kalorn, 50. Barry, only 47. That's really surprising. First defensive pairing, both power plays. Time on ice, 22 minutes. I thought he'd do better than that. I've seen him put up like 70 plus points, even as an 84 overall player. Uh, ben and Carter there, both close to 40. So overall, not too upset. Brent Burns probably should have had more than 27. Second D pairs on both power plays. A lot of good offensive X factors, but what are you going to do? Let's see Cam Talbot's numbers. Four shutouts there, 0.901, 3.01. I mean, Martin Jones has better numbers there, but at least, you know, Talbot's not terrible or anything. Take a look at the entire league here. Crosby had 114 on the LA Kings and led the league in scoring. Dreisaitl 109. Kane 107 there. Again, that's why I said such a good pick late first round. Ranton, Matthews, McDavid, Kucherov, Marshan, Barkov. Most goals. Kucherov there, 50 right on. Defensive scoring, Alex Petrangelo at 90 on the LA Kings. Wow, we could have drafted him over Theodore. Kael McCarr there was second. Um, wasn't it, uh, yeah, Crosby on the LA Kings, so I guess Petrangelo was just feeding Crosby the puck. I don't know. Look at this. Rookie skaters caught the most points with the Maple Leafs. That's pretty funny to see. Where was Michael Bunting? He was on the Buffalo Sabres. And then goaltenders here. Flurry most wins. Best Sabres center for starter. Freddie Anderson there. Back with the Ducks. Probably the lowest goals against two. And he did. Okay. So I uh, will find out who we play here in the first round. Uh, it'll be the worst of the two wild cards. So it'll be the Buffalo Sabres there. But obviously, like I just mentioned, have Michael Bunting. I'm not sure who else is on this team though. Hopefully, can at least get by the first round. So look at their team. They got Bunting. Stutzler is now an 89. He went up a ton this first year. With Kucherov, okay, so pretty nasty first line. Dadunov, Eriksonek, Haula. I mean, they got a 77 Smith on the third. Coleman, Brown, Jarvis, Nemesnikov, Elvins there. Defensively, Rowenski, Polak, Myers, Sherratt, Gardner, Benning. In goal, they got Kakin and Forsberg. So, I like our team better. We have more depth. Again, we should have more depth than, like, every team, as when they're taking prospects, we're actually filling out the NHL lineup. So, first two games here, guys, are at home. 6-4 win, 6-3 win, so pretty high scoring. Go to Buffalo, lose the first, but we win the second. Game 5 is a loss. Game 6 is a win. Okay, so there you go. Moving on to round 2 here against the Florida Panthers. Jonathan Taser has got 9 points in 6 games. Nice. Let's check and see here what the Florida Panthers team looks like. They got Backstrom. Giroux actually rejoined the Panthers. Troy Terry, interesting. Barbanov, Nick Suzuki, Raquel. Smith, Bozak, Kukkonen, Tippett, White, Armia. So they must have good defense and goalies because the four group's kind of like ours in the fact that like, there's no really superstar on the team, although we do have Stamkos. They just have a lot more depth. Our depth's better. Defensively, yeah, they have Kale McCarr. They got Spurgeon. After that, though, worse than us. And then they got Markstrom and Ned. Okay, so kind of a similar build, but they have a better goalie. We have better offense. I think we honestly have better defense, too. So let's see what happens here. First two games are at home. Obviously, we'll have home ice advantage till the Stanley Cup final if we make it. Uh, one and one. We actually destroyed them though in game two. Uh, game three and four in Florida. One nothing win, three two OT win. So very close games. Have to win one of the next three. That's not good. We lose them both. Wow. So we're up three to one. Florida climbs back in this series. Here we go. Game seven. Do or die. Down one. Raquel. Wow. Half a score in this one. We're all done. Wow, are you kidding me? Hall Stammer actually scored. So we're up 2-1. to one. Tippett ties the game, and then Claude Giroux, the guy I almost drafted, the guy who's on the Senators in real life, scores the game winner with two and a half minutes to go. That's heartbreaking. And look at this guy's playoffs complete. Vancouver Canucks, 
won the Stanley Cup. So let's take a look at that team, you know, see who was on it. St. Louis there picks first overall, Edmonton second. I can't believe that. I thought we at least had Florida there. I feel like we got robbed. Taylor Hall, 15 points in 13 playoff games. I mean, can't be upset with him over point per game. I've seen Stamkos there, now 92 overall. Um, Hall stayed the same rating, but a good playoff. He actually tied Samarin points. Tyson Berry was a point per game. Theater was close. Taze and Kane did their parts. Even Jamie Benn, Everly Cloran, uh, for where they were playing, I feel like that's good production. Talbot's numbers weren't great. Uh, definitely could have had, you know, better performance from him there in the playoffs. So after beating us, the Panthers actually beat the Lightning in six before falling to the Canucks in seven in the Stanley Cup Finals. So, wow. If we would have beat the Panthers, I think we could have beat the Lightning, could have, you know, played the Canucks, and then anything could have happened. Uh, Canucks, they beat the Jets in six, Stars in seven, Flames in six, before, of course, beating the Panthers there in seven. We'll look at the awards here. So, of course, Canucks Stanley Cup, Ducks President, individual here, Cross, we got the Art Ross, along with the Hart, Petrangelo, James Norris, all LA Kings so far. Patty Kane, though, got the Lady Bing. Bunting got the Calder. Interesting. Must have had a better plus or minus than Caulfield. McDavid was on the Canucks. He wins the Cons so That's probably why they won. Anderson there got the Vesna. Also got the Liam Jennings. Uh, Siegenthaler, Bill Masterton. LA coach Jack Adams. Kopitar, Selkie. Crosby got the Ted Lindsay. Then Kucherov there. Maurice Richard. Okay. So, kind of unlucky second round there. Up 3-1 to one in the Panthers. They come back and win it. But, you know, pretty typical, I'd say, for the playoff Sims. Also, guys, as I was adding, I realized I forgot to show you the Stanley Cup winning Vancouver Canucks roster. So, of course, led by McDavid there. They've also got Line A, great sniper. He had 30 goals this year, 43 assists. Ryan Hartman, I saw, is over a point per game. Must have been on the top line, Line A, McDavid. Nachushkin there, Milano, Doc, uh, Dubé, Sanford, Glenn Danny. So, they just have some kind of like role players after the really solid top six. Now, in terms of the defense on this team, led by John Carlson. Very good offensive defenseman. Falk, Marino, Branstra, McNabb, all solid. And Marco Vlasic even looks like they signed for cheap on the bottom pair. And then in terms of goaltending, kind of funny actually. They got the Montreal goalies there in Price and Allen. So, solid team for sure. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see this video, both American players only. Maybe we'll have a bit better luck. Other than that, though, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.